Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at Hotel Europejskie, one of the most expensive hotel in all of Poland. The secret to keeping such a prestigious status relies on preserving history and providing luxurious accommodation. Today we will learn more about one of the most exclusive jewels of Warsaw. Our guest today is Mr. Xavier Wonsowski, a direct descendant of Alexander Przeziecki, who decided to build Warsaw's first luxury hotel of international standards in 1855. After returning to Poland from the US in the early 90s, Mr. Wonsowski has been documenting the long and interesting history of Hotel Europejski. One of the qualities known to the communist regime is the confiscation of properties. And as I know, this hotel did not avoid that fate either. I was wondering what did the family go through and how did they manage to reclaim the property? Well, that's a long story, many years. Mm -hmm. um, in 1948, when it was taken away from the family, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, actually it was taken away from the company Okay. Uh, of which uh, the family mem were members. Um, at that point, Stefan Czetwertinski, who was uh, really running the restaurant and uh, the leader of um, the, the company, had a, some bad years. Uh, eventually, he was thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. He spent uh, the, during the 1950s in jail. Ultimately, he was given the option of either rest in jail or leave the country. So he chose the latter and left the country. So he was essentially banished. Um, during that time, uh, the hotel underwent uh, many changes. Uh, first, the, um, uh, the, it was given to the army. Mm -hmm. uh, so the military, uh, military political academy was established mm -hmm. in 1951 after two years of reconstruction. It lasted here until 1954, so there were many changes in order to make the building a military academy, including in this wing here to build a gymnasium, oh. which meant not including one of the floors, right. so it was taller. The building proved to be inadequate for the needs of a military academy in the middle of the city, right. because for instance, in the morning, the soldiers had to run out on the streets for their daily exercises, which yeah. was impractical. Right. Uh, so they uh, moved out in 1954. The building was um, empty for about two years, uh, although uh, Jewish refugees from the Soviet Union did pass through and were housed in the empty rooms uh, of the building. In 1956, it was given to Orbis. Um, it was decided that uh, the building was to be returned as a hotel. Orbis being the national tourist agency and the hotel agency, was uh, given charge of that. And it took them six years to uh, redo the building, okay. um, uh, readapt it uh, for the needs of a hotel, um, <clears throat> to install the new floor where the gymnasium was, um, and uh, hired a staff and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that opened in 1962. And basically it was the Hotel Orbis Europejski until 2005. Um, uh, some years it was attached to the Hotel Bristol as a company. Right. Some years it was with the Hotel Victoria across mm -hmm. the square, mm -hmm. um, but under the umbrella of uh, Orbis, Orbis the whole time. Mm -hmm. There were many people working here, staff that grew also very close, fond of the building. They grew attached to it. They've, uh, there was a, the Europejski family, right. uh, which to this day many uh, former employees reminisce very fondly about. Um, and uh, I, I feel that spirit of the, <laughs> of, of the building that they must have had. So that lasted until 2005. Um, during that time, communism ended. Mm -hmm. And uh, our family started thinking about ways of uh, getting it back, that there must be a way. Um, my grandmother wrote to an uncle here, an aunt from Paris wrote to an uncle here. We started figuring out ways. Uh, we reconstituted the company, Hessa, um, which was the legal entity which was allowed to get the hotel back. Right. It took 14 years, but we finally got it back in 2005. So it's not even that long ago. Like. Well, now it's been another 14 years. So we started the process 28 years ago. Oof. Yeah. Another long struggle. And it was out of the family for, what, 40 some years. Mm -hmm. 
after the hotel opened to guests in 1857. Until the Soviets nationalized it after the war, the hotel was a family-run affair. Generation after generation, knowledge about the business would be handed down and family members would increasingly be well-educated in the hotel business, including in some of the world's most famous hotel schools. So you, you're saying in the earlier segments that your great 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 grandfather established this whole hotel, and I was wondering how the establishment managed to stay within the family. Right. So uh, Alexander Przeszczewski, um, he was the brain behind the whole idea. Right. He began with uh, two brothers, uh, Władysław and uh, Ksawery Pusłowski, mm -hmm. who uh, went into the projects uh, at the very beginning. And it stayed in those families, the Przeszczewski and Pusłowski families, until 1912. Mm -hmm. yeah, at that point, the Pusłowski family had run out of heirs uh, that would have a majority stake. Uh, there were, uh, they just decided to sell the, the shares that were handed down. And they sold them to the grandsons of Alexander Przeszczewski, Stefan and Reinhold Przeszczewski. Mm -hmm. So at that point, there was the two of them, their father, Jan, and their cousin, Zofia um, Przeszczewska, my great-grandmother, who married uh, Severin Czetwertyński. Mm -hmm. She, in fact, had 50% of the hotel oh. because she was an only child. Right. And being that she had half of the original shares, so she was the most important shareholder in the whole enterprise. Mm -hmm. On the Przeszczewski side, there were uh, more relatives, so it was uh, split more. During this time, uh, the hotel was leased to uh, other companies, but the background as individuals uh, was, let's say, on the Pusłowski and Przeszczewski families. Um, once uh, the change happened in 1912, it was under the Przeszczewski family exclusively. Zofia Przeszczewska, my uh, great-grandmother, uh, married in 1898 Severin Czetwertyński, mm -hmm. uh, who was a uh, well-known uh, political figure. He was in the Duma of 1906. He was in the same uh, several times in the Polish parliament. Um, he was a vice marshal of the same. So he was very well known. He was a member of many societies, uh, including Warsaw's Bicycle uh, Society. Um, anyway, so he, he was well known and respected. And uh, in 1921, he decided the best way to move forward is to establish this uh, company, HESA, mm -hmm. uh, Hotel Europejski Spółka Akcyjna, which I mentioned. Uh, so that was set up with those members of the family being the principal owners. Mm -hmm. um, so that began um, in April of 1921. And it was thus until uh, it was confiscated in 1948. Mm -hmm. Several stories about Severin Czetwertyński. Uh, one that I like, a personal story, is um, apart from his official uh, capacity as one of the owners uh, and the head of the Hessa uh, hotel company, um, he liked to have the personal touch with the hotel guests, right. with, the, uh, with the people. So not only did, um, did he head the company, but from his estate, Suchowola in eastern Poland, where cognacs and gins and vodkas were produced, at the distillery there, they were brought here, they were sold in a hotel, in the restaurant, mm -hmm. but also a produce from his farms was brought here, and that was served in uh, the restaurant, mm -hmm. what today we would call like a farmer's market produce, right. so natural uh, grown. So he made sure that that aspect was taken care of, uh, the gastronomical aspect. And then just a personal one, he, after work in the parliament, sometimes he would come by dressed in his finest outfits, uh, and he would uh, borrow a waiter's napkin, drape it over his arm, and walk around the restaurant pretending to be a waiter. Of course, everyone knew who he was. There, there was no uh, getting past that. But that personal touch mm -hmm. and uh, greeting the guests or offering them something or just uh, polite conversation mm -hmm. was his way of being more in touch with the people in, in the hotel. And uh, that made 
the whole aspect of the family owning it, mm -hmm. um, not so distant. It wasn't a right. company somewhere in mm -hmm. some office somewhere. It was, right. he was a, the representative mm -hmm. of the person, the most important one uh, here amongst you is serving you, helping, asking if you needed something. So, so that aspect um, made a huge um, impression on the people, I think, and it, and it set a tone mm -hmm. for the way that the uh, guests were treated. Mm -hmm. There was a personal touch. There was attention to detail and, uh, and a genuine interest in the people that were here. Hotel Europe Yeskia has 150 years and counting a very interesting history. And the fact that the history is preserved and the personal touch of the place is what gave it the standard for the best hotel in Poland and has set the standard ever since. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.